Back to our top story now, where government troops in the Philippines are battling Islamist militants to retake the southern city of Marawi. Well, uh, joining us live now is Richard Jawad Haydarian. He's a political scientist and writer and works at the De La Salle University in uh, Manila. Welcome to the program, Richard. Now, uh, as we heard from our report from our Southeast Asia correspondent, Jonathan Head, earlier, uh, this conflict in Mindanao has lasted nearly half a century. So what's so worrying about what's happening there now? Well, without a question, this is the latest uh, kind of a, a revival of extremism and, and violence in the island of Mindanao. But I think what makes this extremely troubling is the reports coming from the ground from the Philippine military suggesting that there are foreign fighters, uh, uh, you know, uh, tied to the ISIS, who are also who are also among the Maute group, who are also named as the uh, uh, Islamic State of Lanao, among those who laid the siege and, and clashes. In, in Marawi. So I think there, there's a concern right now that uh, the so-called uh, distant caliphate, an ISIS branch or wilayat or province here in Southeast Asia is very much on the horizon. Uh, and I think that's what makes it extremely Indeed. troubling. Indeed. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the fact that uh, there are also concerns that the president of the Philippines will use this violence in order to declare martial law not only in affected areas but all across the country. So all of a sudden, the Philippines is dealing with the specter of ISIS and specter of Marcosian authoritarianism. At least that's how some opposition members see it. Indeed, and of course, martial law uh, reminds everyone of the leadership of former dictator uh, President Marcos. Uh, but tell us, just how embarrassing is this for President Duterte, seeing as he's from the region? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, he had to cut a very important high-profile uh, visit to Russia where he met President Vladimir Putin and wanted to really pivot the Philippines to the east, away from the United States. So he had to cut that short, uh, because these uh, clashes and operations were launched by the Maute group, or this ISIS affiliate groups in the Philippines, while the president and bulk of the national security team, including the national security advisor, were outside the country. And of course, it came shortly after the Philippine army had a failed raid on the safe house of Isnilin Hapulon, who's the head of the Abu Sayyaf group, and also mm -hmm. is acknowledged as the mm -hmm. emir of the ISIS uh, here in Southeast Asia and in the Philippines. Right. So in many ways, there's a lot of pressure on, on, on Duterte because he promised to get the peace process right. Uh, but throughout the first 10 months of his office, he almost obsessively focused on the war on drugs mm -hmm. and secondly also on peace negotiation with communist rebels rather than Muslim rebels. So he could be partly blamed for this. But right now, people are giving him benefit of mm -hmm. doubt and they feel that maybe a martial law or more draconian measures, at least in Mindanao, are necessary to get the situation under control. And we talked about these, the martial law measures, uh, you know, these draconian measures. Do you think they'll work? Well, I mean, the fact of the matter is that this is the fourth time in Philippine history that martial law has been declared. Uh, although President Duterte has to explain why the martial law was declared well beyond the affected area, which is Marawi City. Perhaps they were concerned about coordinated attacks by ISIS affiliate groups across Mindanao. Well, the fact of the matter is that Mindanao has been under a state of uh, emergency since a bombing in Davao City, where Duterte comes from, last year. So the government probably was not able to use uh, the legal leeway that the state of emergency was providing it. So now mm -hmm. it wants to use mm -hmm. the legal leeway that the martial law is providing it in order to crack down on the issue. But right. the fact of the matter is that the Philippines cannot deal with this alone. And ironically, Duterte will have to patch up things with the United States and other tried and tested allies, mm -hmm. because those are the countries that have the high-grade intelligence, equipment, and long history of interoperability with the Philippine military. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us there, Richard Heydarian.